Hola mi gente, un placer nuevamente saludarles. Hoy nuestro equipo de Quienes Somos viajó al pueblito de Carton Place, donde vamos a tener el placer de conversar con Emmett Graham, un joven que vive en este pueblito y que va a compartir con nosotros su experiencia sobre discriminación y racismo que él ha experimentado o ha vivido durante su vida creciendo en este pueblito. Un pueblo que queda como a una hora más o menos manejando de, de Ottawa y un pueblo donde el 95 o quizás más, el 95% o más de la población son personas blancas. Y aquí está su historia. Thank you, Emmett. Welcome to Quienes Somos. First, let me give you a lot of thanks for being here with us because I know you got hurt uh, skating, uh, board yes, skating, before. right? With skateboarding yesterday, but you still had the will to be here with us in front of our camera. Thank you also to our followers all over the world that are following us for your continued support and keep on clicking on the likes, likes, likes. Emmett, as you may know already, the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis in the United States has triggered a lot of protests all over the globe, including Canada and Ottawa, mm -hmm. which you participated last week. You grew up in Carton Place, a small town where 95 or 98 percent of the population are non-black. Which comes to my first question. Growing up in Carton Place, being a black young man, have you ever experienced any type of discrimination or racism against you or your family just for being black? Great, thank you so much Danilo for having me on your program. I definitely think I've experienced racism within Crown Place. Uh, when I was younger, I think it was more or less like the uneducation of younger children, like the schools aren't really teaching how to properly like deal with a um, racist situation, but also how to have friends of pe that are people of color. Um, but then as I grew older, I feel like people were educated on, you know, people of color. And I think it was just pure, um, you know, like discrimination and racism. Like I've been called the N-word by people at my school. Um, I've been excluded from group chats within social media because they openly say the N-word and that's their excuse for why they're not adding me in. So I think, uh, yes, I've experienced racism within my small town of Carlton Place. Hemet, it doesn't really surprise me at all that uh, yeah. you have uh, unfortunately uh, lived or experienced those unpleasant uh, experiences. You are not the only one, no in Ottawa, no in this place. Uh, by the way, there is, uh, I believe that the, uh, talking to your mom off camera, I believe that she told me that the population of uh, black uh, people in Carton has grown. Yeah, it has grown by a little bit just with like new homes coming in and uh, yeah, there, it's been probably maybe 5% more, but... How yeah. many people, how, what will be the black population in this little town of Carton? 600, 1,000, um, less than that? I'd say definitely less than 1,000, I'm not less really sure, yeah, probably in the smaller hundreds actually. No, yeah. if you don't mind, but for the people that are following us, to share that experience, at least one, one example, what, what experience is the one that you lived or that you experienced, so they, people that... Uh, support uh, the movement or, 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 or demanding for the justice and, uh, and the end of this uh, situation that is very unpleasant for some people, especially good people like you and your family. Share with the followers, uh, give, me, give us an example, what was the experience that you lived? I was 14 when I experienced that incident. You were 14? Yeah. No, that was the, you were 14 when you experienced the first, I would say, situation. Mm -hmm. Did you experience more after you were 14 when you get older or even when you were younger? Um, I think now I'm kind of like, I kind of drown things out more, you know, like I have my headphones on all the time when I'm skateboarding now. Um, I don't really take things to heart as much and I think that's because I've been built up so much by all these experiences and you know, you, you gotta have tough skin being a person of color in a small town. Now, there was a lot of protest in a lot of cities in the United States that triggered the death of Floyd. Mm -hmm. You were present and participated in the protest in, that happens in Ottawa last week, yeah. including the Prime Minister of Ghana. Which comes to my next question for you. As a young man, the new generation that is, I guess, uh, aching or demanding change 
or justice to all these unpleasant situations that you have experienced, like probably millions in all, all over the world. Do you believe, as a young man, you won't believe, do you believe that looting and destruction should be part of this demand for justice? Yeah, I definitely think the, the looting and um, the destruction, you know, has been seen in a lot of the protests um, just recently, but also from way back when. But um, I don't necessarily think that's um, stuff that goes hand in hand with protesting, but I can see where some people are coming from, just in the sense, you know, we've asked so many times peacefully, you know, we've um, seen football players and sports players take knees peacefully during the national anthem, the protests, the violence and all that stuff, and that just hasn't worked. Um, within, so I can see where some people are coming from, but I don't think it needs to necessarily happen in specific places, such as you know, I'm glad it didn't happen in Ottawa and stuff like that, because um, you know, we've seen a few um, deaths by police in Ottawa, but I think you know, down in the states, it's uh, much worse down there. So I think it's just a natural reaction. Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily react that way, but I know that's that's some people's reaction in the United States. Okay. Uh I can understand what you said, but do you mind elabor elaborating a little bit more about the, I understand some of these people, where they come from? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, personally, I haven't experienced, you know, some of the um, violent racism um, from the police towards the people, you know, just, I've never walked into a store and been wrongfully accused. I've never been walking down the street and stopped by a police officer. But I think many people of color in the United States, you know, have that happen every single day, happen once a week. You know, it happens more frequently uh, down there. And I think these people are just sick and tired of all this stuff going on. And it's anger coming out. And, you know, I think um, they're, I don't know if they're in the right or the wrong for doing the looting. I think it's people's um, businesses. They're destroying um, and stuff like that. I don't agree with that. I think people work very hard in that. But I do understand where the aggression is coming from, just having to put up with it every single day, every single day. Do you believe, uh, Emmett, that, um, or would you agree, that some people may be taking advantage of the real situation just to commit wrongdoing? Like, for example, I would say the looters and the, the destroyer. Even the protester, the organizer, were trying to stop those people from destroying businesses and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and looting businesses. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that looting, again, and destruction should be or should not be part of the protest to send the message clear? Uh, yeah, I do think people are taking advantage of the looting. I think people who may not have been protesting before are only protesting now because they see the looting, they see the free stuff, they see the destruction, they see the spray painting. Um, I don't think that looting should be part of um, protesting um, because, you know, violence is never the answer. I think peace is always the way. But I also don't disagree with some of the looting happening in the States because people are just fed up. I guess that they... The pressure and tolerance, I guess, uh, yeah, went over the, like the water, eh? The, yeah. the water just went over exactly. the floor. I, I, I don't know what else to, to say, but uh, for example, uh, do you remember uh, the protest that we had last week in order? Yeah. You were a participant. Mm -hmm. We are lucky that there was no confrontation. Yeah. There was no destruction. And uh, our people that participated, send the message very clear, mm -hmm. including our prime minister yes. and some member of the parliament were present supporting this cause. Mm -hmm. So my question is, if we, what, why we were able to protest and send the message clear without any destruction, without any confrontation, without any looting, but uh, in the United States, people may still do it. Why do you think that that can be? Why can't we do it without any of those situations, but in the United States, it's still happening? Um, yeah, I think, you know, um, people coming together, people of power, people like the prime minister, the police officers, like in the Ottawa protest, I found that the police officers weren't stepping in. They were standing back and, you know, were they there to protest? Were they there to um, bring crime? No, they weren't. I think they were just there for the people's safety, which police are supposed to be doing. They're not supposed to be violent They're, if they don't have to be. 
And I think also having our people of power like uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and other people in office coming forward, it shows that we're all community and we're all in this together. Whereas in the United States, you know, that's not happening. We have Donald Trump sitting behind a desk and he's <laughs> going against the people who are protesting. Um, and then we have the police officers in some of the United States that are um, protesting who are there to, you know, arrest people, cause havoc. But I think the police officers um, within Ottawa did a really great job standing back. And, you know, I saw people uh, calling for medics and stuff like that. And the police were right there. They weren't standing back. They weren't causing a scene. They were there to help. Sure. Yeah. Which going to my last question, Emmett, do you really think that behavior is a major factor of the increasing of some people discriminating against the person, not the color of the skin, but against the person behavior. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I do think that behavior plays a big role in uh, discrimination. And you know, I think some people have the mindset of like, okay, we don't care if you're black, white, Asian. Um, if you do bad, then I see you as a bad person. But I think, on the other hand, I think um, society, specifically in America, um, if you're a white person and you do bad, there's a million excuses about why you did that thing. But then if you're a black person and you do something bad, then there's only one excuse and it rarely ever gets brought up and that's the one reason. And so I feel like being a person of color, if you do one bad thing, then all of a sudden everyone in America thinks you're a bad person. Whereas I feel like having the mindset of, okay, you're a bad person because you did this, not because of your skin color. And I think it just depends on the mindset of specific people. Some people are, you know, subconsciously racist and they don't know they're doing it. Whereas other people just love everyone and they can see past skin color and just see the true being. Well, Emmett, I believe I agree with you 100% because I'm the type of person, I believe that there's a lot of people like myself, including your mom or yourself, that if I see a person that is misbehaving and behaving really bad to the point that may be a criminal act or criminal behavior, I don't want to be close to that person. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if the person could be Latino, black, white, Chinese. And, and, and the question always arises in my head, behavior of a person can be considered by other people a threat and because you feel threatened by that person for their behavior may you might want to be a stay you might want to keep your distance from that person but then the person and the other side might say oh that person is racist or discriminating against me and perhaps it's not even the color of the skin but it's mm -hmm. the behavior because if I have a friend that behave like a criminal and I know he can get me into trouble I don't want to be near that friend and I don't care if the person is black white or Chinese or Latino if your behavior is bad, and I know that your behavior can be a threat to me because you, you might have a gun or, or you are a fighter or when you're drunk you like to fight, obviously I don't want to be close to that person because your behavior might cause me trouble mm -hmm. and it's not, it doesn't mean that I'm discriminating against your color or, or, or where you're from. It's just that we have nothing in common, yeah. right? Now, do you think, in your personal opinion, that White people can be more racist than black people, or black people can also be racist against not only white but other, other, other nationality, culture. You know, I think that um, definitely white people can experience racism and racist acts, but I don't think they'll ever experience to the extent that black people have and continue to experience. Um, you know, I, I know some black people uh, say things about some white people. I've experienced that before. But I think in terms of the acts of slavery and stuff like that within North America, I don't think that white people will ever know what it feels like to be a minority in society. The reason I ask you that question is because my daughter, my daughter grew up in New York, mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. And she told me when she grew up older and she moved back to Canada, to Ottawa, that she even felt kind of discriminated because black people in, in, in New York, will address her or refer to her like the Dominican girl or the Puerto Rican girl or the Cuban girl. Even though she's black because her mom is Jamaican, but they will not refer to her as the black girl. She will say the Dominican or the Cuban. Like uh, she was not accepted as a black because she has a Latino last name. I have people from Haiti, I have people from Puerto Rico that they also are called as their nationality, not as the color of the skin, like the black guy or the black person, the, the Puerto Rican guy, mm -hmm. the Dominican guy, the Cuban guy. And uh, that's what I ask you, can also a black person be racist against other 
person that may not be born in, not even born in the United States, because there's a lot of people born in the United States that are black, mm -hmm. much darker than you, but they are not referred. I know, I know this guy from Cuba that is twice darker than you. They don't call him black. They call it the Cuban guy, not the black guy. What black guy? One day I remember I asked to do a test. I asked one of the guys that I know, I go, oh, can you call uh, the black guy? And they were looking around. I go, where is it? Him. He said, no. Oh, oh, the Cuban guy. No, no, the black guy. He said, that black. Oh, oh he's Cuban. Yeah, but he's black. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But anyways, um, Emmett, have you ever been rejected or discriminated against for being black by any member of your family since your mom is a non-black lady? Uh, I think I've been actually pretty fortunate to have a very accepting, not only a very accepting family, but a family that'll come with me to the protest. Like my mom came with me to the protest. My grandparents were at home because they um, didn't want to catch COVID-19 because they're at risk. But uh, they were definitely on board with everything. All of my family members from, you know, my great aunts to my little cousins are all supportive of people of color and not only just supportive, but they stand out and they want to bring in these protests to have peace. And we're also very fortunate to have many family friends that are very supportive and um, have a voice within the black community. As a young man, new generation that also seeks for change and justice, what would, the, what would it be the message that you can send to the youth, especially black people, about this whole situation? What's your message? I think one thing that I like to say to um, all youth and all upcoming people within the population um, is a quote actually by Jimi Hendrix and it's when the power of love overcomes the love of power the world will know peace and I think that's a very important statement to make because you know the police uh, youth certain race groups are all looking for power they're all looking for dominance uh, above each other but I think the one thing that will show us peace and bring us closer together is that we all need to unify as one and we need to have separate categories the people that protest the peace and uh, want to live amongst people and love everyone and then the people who are racist and I think once we build this big group of people who accept everyone I think the world will know peace and I think the people over here on this side that don't um, necessarily love everyone or want peace, I think they will eventually be played out, especially with um, upcoming youth now starting families and they will raise their children in a sense that they will love everyone. So my word to everyone would be just to keep showing your peace, keep showing your love and the world will get better. Well, Emmett, uh, I have nothing left to say, but thank you again for, be for being here with us and having the courage to share your experience and, and your thought uh, with our followers. Thank you, our followers, uh, for your continuous support. Gracias a nuestros seguidores por su apoyo. And I hope, Emmett, that uh, what you just said that really is inspiring, that one day the world will come at once and we will be just be in, uh, being in, in peace and love, which is what we need. Yeah. A mi gente, no olviden de seguirnos en, nuestra, en nuestro canal de las redes sociales. No olviden que como yo no hay dos. Y como Emmet, no hay dos. <laughs> sí. Hasta la próxima.